cities, they have decided we're going to do certain things. To lead us through this part of our uh, program, Steve Gurney, who is the founder and uh, publisher of Guide to Retirement Living Sourcebook, who's also a member of the Long-Term Care Coordinating Council, and who is one of the most creative folks I've ever run into when it, you're talking about how do you deal with issues related to aging, is going to lead off by sharing some general information about this movement called Aging in Community or whatever it is that it's called. It's called various things and will then lead us through with the uh, other members of the panel in discussing what's happening in Fairfax County. Steve? All right. Well, thanks, Jerry. And this is very exciting to see this type of dialogue and forum happening here in McLean. And, and piggybacking on your comments, what I would like you to think about is let's not label this movement. Let's, let's have a blank canvas here in McLean, okay? And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what people are doing in other communities around the country. And then we're going to have three speakers who are going to talk about different communities in Fairfax County. I want you to think of those as just colors that you can use, colors on a palette that you can use to paint your own unique, beautiful picture on how McLean can be inclusive to all ages and all abilities. And, um, there's, there's no one model, I don't think, that anybody could say that's gonna, that you can apply on any neighborhood or any, neighbor, or any community. It takes a grassroots effort to come up with a creative solution that's unique to this unique community. So let me tell you where this movement got, got its roots, at least the real energy got its roots, up in Boston in a neighborhood called Beacon Hill. And the neighbors there in Beacon Hill saw some of their fellow neighbors who were committed and loved this neighborhood moving away for a variety of reasons. They might move to a retirement community. They might move away to be closer to their children, or perhaps their home was a bit to manage, and so they just had to move to a different neighborhood, and they got disconnected from the community that they loved. And so what they did was they came together in a grassroots way, and they created something called Beacon Hill Village. And one of the labels that this movement gets is the village movement, thanks to them. Um, they started in 2001, and it had a, you know, a relatively slow start. And then uh, they had some fantastic good fortune. New York Times and AARP decided to write uh, some articles on what they were doing. And it caught the attention of the nation. I mean, inquiries went up. Uh, people started getting really interested in what are these folks doing? And uh, so much so that they were able to organize a forum and they invited people from all over the country to come to Boston and learn what they were doing. And much to their surprise, they got somebody from every single state in the, in the country. It just so happens that the D.C. area became the hotbed of replicating what they were doing. And uh, we have on the stage one of the first villages of replication, but we had Capitol Hill, Watergate, uh, Mount Vernon, who you'll meet, and uh, Clifton were some of the first villages outside of the Boston area to be replicated. So one of the benefits that we have is a county that we're in a county here that really sees the future and what uh, our board of supervisors in the fairfax erie agency on aging organized was a similar forum that said how can we reinvent our neighborhoods here in fairfax county and it was held at the government center is very well attended and we had folks from beacon hill from new jersey from all over uh, sh showcasing what they were doing as solutions in their communities. And the goal was, uh, let's talk on a county level, and now everybody go back to their neighborhoods and try to replicate what uh, this on a community level. And I'm pleased to see that this forum is a direct result of, 
of this very intentional, thoughtful uh, approach to how can we reinvent our neighborhoods. So um, today, we're going to, in a, in, a, in a moment, I'm going to introduce you to uh, three of these, uh, these various approaches, different approaches. But before I do that, I want you to sort of think about four things that really uh, are um, that, that our panel of residents echoed that are really important in, in aging in community. The first is uh, each of these initiatives that you've seen here are grassroots efforts. The, uh, I've been in this business for 21 years, and I've seen entrepreneurs try to attack this problem with business sense. Look at demographics. We can help people age in place. I've got the one-stop shop service. And no one's really been successful there. When Beacon Hill came together in a grassroots effort, it had the exact opposite um, uh, outcome. People got interested. People are engaged. You all are sitting in this audience, and I believe a lot of it has to do with this being a grassroots effort. Okay, so now I'm going to get to my four things. The, the first thing that I see as important is connectedness to your neighbors, that we can be a resource to each other just as much as uh, writing a check to an organization to help you walk the dog or clean the gutters, is, is that a connected neighborhood is very important. And, and it was echoed with some of, our, uh, some of our residents speaking. The second is solutions for getting around. And I'm not talking about transportation here. I'm talking about getting around, is, is that we are in the suburbs, and many of us are held captive to our private automobile to connect us to the world. And so we need to think creatively about how can we get around. Well, my first point was neighbors. If your neighbor is going to Safeway and you've got a connection, you might be able to get around by con a connected neighborhood. The third is accessibility and being right-sized. And I bring these up in the same, uh, in the same breath because accessibility can mean having an accessible home the way that was discussed with some of our panel members so that you could get in and out of your home in a wheelchair or you could push a baby stroller easily in and out, out of your home. But right-sized might mean I've lived in this four-bedroom home and I love it, but it's not the right size for me. And But I don't want to leave McLean. And that's what aging in community is about. You know, if you want to say aging in place is staying put in the home that you've lived in for 40 years, but aging in community is staying put in the community that you've lived in for 40 years. And the last thing, and I, I, I think this is the most important thing, and it was echoed by our three people, it's having a purpose, is, is that it's, it, the, the key thing is, is having a purpose, and I think we can look at that from a selfish perspective, that, hey, I like to play golf or I like painting, but I think what we've heard up here in between the lines is a more important reason to have purpose, and that's the impact that you can have on the community. I want Ed to be in this community tutoring less fortunate children. Okay, that's the that's the role of elders, and that's why we got to keep them here in McLean. And Judy said something that I had never really thought about in her presentation. She sort of mentioned our community is focused on children, and I would say to you that a community that's focused on children that doesn't include elders in a big, meaningful way is completely missing the boat. That this is living history of McLean. This is better wisdom that you can get in an Ivy League university, and we've got to do everything we can to keep these folks here 